Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we are hearers of the Father. We are joined hearers with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are a family. We are one. A divine God, I'm praying therefore, divine that your Holy Spirit will speak to us, divine, revealing to us your mind concerning us in Jesus' name. Allah divine, the way you want us to relate with one another, I'm praying the Holy Spirit will work it out in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Fill us with your Spirit. Cover us with your grace. Make us strong, strengthened by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are considering pursuing peace and holiness. Pursuing peace and holiness. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. We are going to say this verse together in a chorus form. One, two, go. Can we say it together with greater strength? One, two, go. Now we're going to say it the third time with a higher strength yet the more. One, two, go. Exactly. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The exhortation content here is central and pivotal to the message of the whole Bible. The challenge is for everyone who desires to see the Lord at the end of his Christian race on earth. The message is not for the one that is not thinking to see the Lord, is not desiring to see the Lord. The instruction is not for that person that does not even know the Lord exists. It's not for the one that is not thinking of heaven, but for the one that has known that the Lord is there. For he that comes to God must know that he is. And that he wants to go to, to heaven. He wants to go and be before the Lord. That's all his effort. All her effort. Then this comes as an exhortation. An instruction a commandment and advice. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. It is instruction for the ordinary believer that wants to see the Lord. It is instruction to a Christian worker 
that wants to see the Lord. It is an instruction to a Christian leader that wants to see the Lord at the end of his service. Paul said, This I do, that I might be partaker of the blessing with you. I bring myself under, lest that I thought I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So, it's an instruction for all people. The only person exempted from this instruction is an angel. If somebody is an angel already in heaven, the angels that are in heaven, they are exempted. The people also exempted from this instruction are the saints that have left the earth. The spirits of just men made perfect that are already in heaven. And the third group of people exempted are those at the damned who are in hell. So these are exempted. But those who still have the hope of eternal life follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The challenge is for everyone, as I have told you, who desires to see the Lord at the end of his Christian race on earth. The pursuit of peace and holiness requires God's grace and divine oppression in man's heart. The natural unregenerate man does not have peace with God does not have peace within, within himself. Neither does he know how to maintain peace with his fellow men. You will not carry the gospel of holiness to a sinner. Be holy, be holy. He has not even known how to come to God. How will he be holy? It's not by his power. He has not even known God. How can they call on him of whom they have not believed? How can they be made holy who have not known Jesus and have not seen his salvation? But it comes to us who have known Jesus and have testified of his salvation. Profess it that we are called further to this holiness of life. Because we want to. That's why it is given to us. To him that has shall more be given. Follow peace with all men. And holiness with that which no man shall see the Lord. It takes a man to come to Jesus so that he can make peace with God. Then he can have peace in himself. Then he can live in peace with man, with his fellow man. Faith, peace with God. Then, peace with himself. Then, peace with fellow man. This come together in a way. But, this is actually the order. Except a man therefore is born again. He cannot have peace. Even within himself. How much more saying? He can have peace with fellow men. Then, it shows therefore, when someone is not born again, you can't expect a life of peace in him, within himself, and his fellow man. So, the true believer is to follow peace with all men. But his, his pursuit does not end there. He is also to pursue, to pursue holiness. This holiness is the gift of God to his own with a strong desire for the nature of God in him the believer pursues and prays for a purified heart a heart that is made holy being sanctified he continues to seek to live in holiness as a practical expression of his sanctification. In Christ, our holiness must not be in word or doctrine only. 
Because it's going to be tested. It's going to be proved. Students that are in class receive lectures. If you just leave them there without tests, you will not know the one that is consecrated. But they know surely they will be tested. They fight against their laziness. They fight against their weak habits because they know they will be tested. They know, if I fail, I will be removed from being here. So, what a Christian, a Christians know they are going to be tested. It's only some of them know that they will be tested at the end. If I fail, I will go to hell. If I, uh, if I succeed, I will go to heaven. They are seeing the end. But... It's not only the end. It, it shall be, you are being tested. You shall be tested even in the everyday living. In family living. In church living. In the working place. You are going to be tested. Circumstances will come to let us know who you are. The Lord will allow them. A provocation will come to let us know who you are. When they got just Joseph, Hold his leg, hold his hand, carry his head. And they were carrying him to the pit. It was a test to know what was in him. Was he really godly? We will hear his, the, the words that will come out of his mouth at that time. We will see the actions he will take at that time. It's a trial that came on him to know, have you got this holiness? When he went to Egypt, it was still a test. When that glorious woman, after the glory of man, the glory of the world, came to her, came to him and said, Lie with me, I'm just free for you. It was to test to know, have you really got this God? Have you got this righteousness indeed in your life? When he was taken to prison, it was also a test to him. In your righteousness, you are thrown into prison. How are you going to react? In fact, even when he had been glorified, rejoicing, see his brethren that hurt him. His brethren that threw him to the pit. His brethren that sold him to slavery and banished him from his father's house. See them come again. See the one that held the leg. See the one that held the hand. See the one that uh, was lifting up his head. See them come. What was he going to do? Now, he was in power here. Authority was in his hand. What would he do? Is trial to know whether you have got the righteousness of God. To know whether you have got the holiness of God. So, every time the trial, the test will come. Abraham... Take your child, your only son, and sacrifice for me upon one of the mountains I will show you of. A test again has come to Abraham. So, test will come from your fellow men. Circumstances. To renew, are you a child of God? Are you a righteous man? Are you a consecrated man? Do you know Jesus? Do you possess this Christian experience? Do you really have a ministry? Do you have a calling? So, these are tests and trials. Let's not think that it is at the end. We see them in the everyday living. The test will come to see what is in us. Yes. Our holiness must not be in word or doctrine only. We must demonstrate practical, biblical holiness in our daily life. At work, at home, in our relationship with God, as well as in our relationship with all men. Demonstrate practical, biblical holiness. Now, have you come at a Muslim, an unbeliever, that lived a beautiful life in some respect and you say wonderful this man is a good man 
Have you come as a man like that? If then the Lord says, Your holiness should be higher than that man's holiness. It is the holiness of a sinner. And you enjoyed it. That is the life of a sinner. That you even enjoy. And the Lord says, Much is expected from you. Much. More than that sinner. More than even that sinner you say you enjoy his life. The Lord is expecting more from you. Then, your eyes should be lifted up to see the grades you are supposed to operate upon. The level you should move. Have you seen a Christian from maybe Anglican, maybe from Aqua, from one of these churches, from Baptist, from one of these churches that is living a beautiful life? He has not known of sanctification as a definite Christian experience. He has not known of the gift of holiness, but he knows of Jesus, of the salvation of Jesus. And he, he really embraces his love with a shining face, with a beautiful life, the way he loves you, the way he cares, the way he lives generally. He said, Kai, I like this woman. She's a Christian. Then you, that much is given. See how much is expected from you. See, you who come to the knowledge of sanctification, as a definite Christian experience, the doctrines of sanctifi- doctrine of sanctification, you that live constantly in the exhortation of this truth, see how much is expected from you. How much God in heaven is expecting from you. So, that is the quiet of us. Number one, we are considering desire for peace. Desire for peace. Number two, diligence in holiness. Diligence in holiness. And number three, determination to see God. Determination to see God. Now we go back to point number one. Desire for peace. Go again to Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 14. Follow peace. With all men. And holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men, except there is a desire to live in peace, you will not be able to live in peace. You must be willing to live this peaceful life. Otherwise, you can't make it. Do you know, if you want to live a peaceful life, you will struggle against yourself if you want it all your wish is I want to live in peace with people I want to live in peace with people the first battle you will have to be fighting is against yourself against your inclinations against your thoughts against your feelings against your emotions you will bring everything to subjection you will resist everything you will break everything you say no, I no, peace you will control. You will control. Why? You want to live in peace. The second thing, since you want, you will go for where you will get peace from God. You will, you will not cease to pray. Because you want to live in peace. You will call on God who gives peace. You will call on God. Give me peace. Give me peace. With this person. Give me peace. In this circumstance. Give me peace. You will keep on calling on God. Why? You want to have peace. Next, number three, you will go for that that will give you peace. Whatever you know you will do to give yourself peace, you will go for it. Why? Because you want peace. You will pursue whatever. You will need to pursue. Whatever will give you peace. Do you need counseling to give you peace? 
Do you need to go and meet somebody to express your mind so you can have peace? Do you need somebody to go and ask forgiveness from him so you can have peace? All these things you will do if there is the desire. Strive and contentions are natural for those who have not been converted to Christ. They are not converted. So, strife and contentions is unnatural. You touch me, I will show you. That's normal. He did this to you, to you and you kept quiet. What did you do? He, he did like this and you kept quiet. It's normal of man. That's in the world. But, when someone is born again, and obtains righteousness of God definitely the desire to be in peace with people will come if somebody loves God he will want to obey God and live in peace because God says so if you are born again you have the spirit of Christ you will want to be in peace because except there is this peace you will, you will not have that righteousness in the book of Psalm. 85 verse 10 from 85 I read verse 10 the Bible says mercy and truth are met together righteousness and peace have kissed each other there can be righteousness you can't be assured of your righteousness. You can't enjoy your righteousness in the absence of peace. Your righteousness will be destroyed when your peace is challenged. Therefore, it's only righteousness and peace that go together. So, if you have got righteousness, you say you are righteous, then there should be peace. Because the two, of them, the two go together. Else, there may be something you still need to do to be in righteousness. That thing that you need to do to keep you in your peace. That's it. Again, in Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. The Bible says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost righteousness and peace that's what make up the kingdom of God and then joy in the Holy Ghost this is Christianity there should be peace in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23 the Bible tells us, saying, But the fruit of the Spirit is joy, is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. When the Holy Spirit is in you, He will steer you to peace. He will fill you with peace. He will lead you to steps of having peace. Peace with God, peace with yourself, peace with your fellow man. The, it's, a, it's a fruit, it's part of the fruit of the Spirit. The presence of the Spirit, that there should be peace in your life. That there should be peace in that family. Peace with your husband, peace with your wife, peace with fellow church workers, peace with fellow ministers, peace with everybody. The Holy Spirit will want this in your life because there's peace in heaven and God is in perfect peace perfect peace despite what the devil is doing in the world God is perfectly peaceful so we are saying there is a radical change in our hearts and lives when we receive Christ and his salvation though we are still in the world in the midst of those who hate the narrow way to heaven those who follow the broad way to hell those who hate and persecute us we follow peace with all men 
We live amidst men whose modest, I mean, whose modes of thinking and acting are very different and opposed to, to ours. Yet we are to do everything that lies in our power, consistent with truth and holiness, to live in peace with our ungodly neighbors. Do everything that lies in your power. Romans chapter 12 verse 18 the Bible says if it be possible as much as lieth in you live peaceably with all men if it be possible I ask you Christian man Christian woman they are not talking to this other person have you made all your efforts to ensure that condition does not exist have you tried with all trial in your own ability to ensure that condition does not exist have you tried prayer to God fasting about it battle with Satan have you tried going to him, going to her for settlement have you tried bringing another person or two others for settlement have you tried bringing the issue to the church for settlement to ensure there be peace have you done all that is in your power and the situation refuses to change if it be possible as much as lieth in you. If therefore you have not exhausted your energy and there is no peace between you and someone and you have not exhausted your energy, you are not guiltless before God. You can't be holy because follow peace with all men and holiness. It is when you have followed peace that you will arrive at that holiness by which you can see the Lord. If you have not exhausted all energy, all effort, and that situation remains like that, you stay like that, you are not holy. And you can't see the Lord. You have not exhausted your energy. You have not used up all means. That's what we're saying. If it be possible, as much as it lies in you, live peaceably with all men. That's the word of God. As much as it is, the ma if you can take another step, give a portion to seven, give to eight also. Even when you think you have done all, think whether there's another way. Think whether there's still another thing to do, to still work out this peace. Has God given you revelation and vision? Okay, I have arrived at something. Let me try this one also. Give a portion to seven and give to it to make sure you live in peace but if you have tried all your ways then you are guiltless in that matter before God and human beings are witnesses that you have done all but you couldn't obtain the peace and the Holy Spirit bears witness to your spirit too that your righteousness is not tempered with so Let's see it this way and never play with this issue of peace. Now, if the Bible would talk about living in peace, even with fellow men, sinners in the world, who even make, give you offenses, despise you, don't even love our God, you should still make effort to live in peace with them as much as there is still wisdom and grace to do it, how much more among ourselves as believers? How much more should you live in peace among your fellow believers? How much If in the world where there is no roof, in an open sky, you are still to live in peace, how much more when you come to the church and sit under the same roof, in the name of worship, we should live in peace with all men. In the book of 
2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 11 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 11 finally brethren fare ye well be perfect be of good comfort be of one mind live in peace and the God of love and peace shall be with you. He said, he was trying to summarize the whole thing. Can you understand that? Paul was summarizing, wants to put all who was writing to them in just few words. Few words. That's why he said, finally, my brethren, bye bye, fare you well. He said, be perfect. Don't give room for any flow in your life. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Be united. Live in peace. Live in peace. And see the way he describes God. This is the God you serve. See the way he describes God. This is the God you call unto. This is the God you are moving with. See the way he describes God. And the God, and he said, and the God of love and peace. He summarized all God's dealing to be love and peace. He summarizes God into love and peace. Can you therefore not live in peace in the church? and think you serve this God or that you have him can you be struggling and quarreling with somebody bearing grudges and say you serve God the God of love and peace not only love with peace because as of love you may love some people but there's one person no 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 there's no peace let's ensure we serve this God. Get him wholesome in the peace he gives. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. With all, let's start from verse 1. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. With all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bone of peace. The Holy Spirit will walk in us when we live in peace. We'll have His free course among us when we live in peace. If we're not living in peace, it gives the preacher problem. Because if I say like this now, this person will say I'm talking to him. He says, yes, I brought him to the pulpit. There's problem. You are not giving the, him chance. He will, the preacher will himself be resisting the Holy Spirit if he's not disciplined. No, Lord, if I say that one, you know, they will tell me, they will say, I'm saying it because I want to do like this. It, it shows the atmosphere is not peaceful. And when two people are quarreling among themselves, and maybe another person comes to handle, to settle them, if they are not, you know, one is born to say, huh, you want, it's because he's from your tribe. That's why you want to support him. You are hindering the move of the Spirit. When there is no peace, we hinder the move of the Spirit. Our minds will not be united in our prayers. So, the move, the work of the Holy Spirit that unites us together. The Spirit moves us, praying with us, interceding for us, moving our minds before God. He can't do that. We are not united. We must be united. Finally, brethren, Live in peace. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. As you live in peace, then the Holy Spirit keeps us one together. And he said, endeavoring. Endeavoring. It takes effort. It's not casual. Effort. Work hard to ensure we live in peace together. Work hard. Please, work hard. To ensure your brethren should live in peace. Work hard to ensure the church should live in peace. 
the people of God should live in peace, endeavoring. In that way, we keep the unity of the Spirit. Again, in the book of Romans chapter 14, verse 19. Romans chapter 14, verse 19. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Let us therefore, now that we are here, now that we have come together, there are things we could consider. We can look back to the past and say, let's bring this one. We have to settle this one. Let's do this one. We have to settle this one. And there might still be some things of the past to be settled. Yet, let's examine only those things that are meant for peace. That can bring progress, restructuring, godliness, righteousness. Let us follow the things that are meant for peace. The new ideas should be peace. Even the thoughts of our hearts and our imaginations. Please, are they going to give us peace? If it is done, if you say what you want to say, will you encourage peace? This person has said a thing that is hurting. And is hurting. You want to say your own. Is it going to bring peace or add to more hurt? That's the question. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. And things wherewith one may edify another. You will build a person. Even if it is in reproof, you are still building that person. You are encouraging that person. Let's follow that way. Let's follow that way. Let's follow it together. Let's really be two in one. Two have become one. Follow that which is meant for peace. Our peace, our good, our health, our oneness, our togetherness. That should be our goal. In First Thessalonians chapter five, verse fifteen. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse fifteen. It says, "See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. See." Doesn't the Bible call us children of peace? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Then, let us therefore, says the word, see that not render evil for evil. They did you evil. Will you not render evil back? No. Joseph did not render it to his brethren. He said, No. Fear not, I will feed you. I will care for you. I will nourish you and your children. Let us therefore not render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good. God is good. Be like him. Follow his way. In James chapter 3 verses 17 and 18. James chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 but the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. You know, there will be wisdom. Definitely. There will be the use of wisdom. Employment of wisdom as we relate with one another. But it must be the wisdom of God. We must be taking that step in the wisdom of God. And the wisdom that God gives is pure wisdom. There's no sin there. 
There's no iniquity there. There's no darkness there. It's first pure. Then, pure, the fruit it produces. Since it is pure, then it is righteous wisdom. The fruit it produces is peaceable fruit. First pure, then peaceable. Because the fruit, I mean, the fruit of righteousness, the effect of righteousness is peace. If that wisdom is from above, it should bring peace. Encourage the peace of the church, the peace of the brethren, the peace of the fellowship. First pure, then peaceable. Peaceable. That's the word of God. And easy to be entreated. That is to say, easy to yield, willing to yield. You are willing to yield. It's not that, no, God has told me this. You can't listen to another person. Give his suggestion. No, God. Many people think God spoke to them. But God didn't speak to them. Therefore, although you have received it from God, release it that it should be judged. Let this prophet speak by two and most by three and let one judge. If God has revealed a thing, if you have got that wisdom, why? Let it be examined. If anybody has a way to counsel, listen. If his counsel, you know, there's no counsel nor device against the Lord. What the Lord has given to you, if it is true, it shall be tried and still stands to be faithful. Therefore, let not this wisdom of yours lead you to autonomy, lead you to pride. Absolute no. Easy to be entreated. Ready to yield for examination. But is firm. Peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. Full of mercy and good fruits. The fruit of this wisdom is, will bring more love. And people will eat it and be happy. It will be sweet. The fruit of it will be sweet without partiality and without hypocrisy. So, that does not mean you are not firm. You are firm. Because truth cannot be destroyed. Yet, it says you should be gentle. Gentle in wisdom. Because if the wisdom must bless people, you must be humble with it. Else, the good thing in your hand will be rejected. So, we must give attention to peace. Philippians chapter 4, verse 2. We see the place the Lord gives to peace. Follow peace with all men. Philippians chapter 4, verse 2. It says, Philippians chapter 4, verse 2. I beseech your diets and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. What has happened to these Udias? What's going on between Udias and Sintiki? That they are now pleading. You are in the Lord. Be in peace together. Be united. Settle your differences. And walk in peace. I beseech you. Apostolic uh, it is apostolic please please be in the same mind syntyche you dares agree come together in peace if for any reason when you were over there you were throwing stones on yourselves you were kicking yourselves now you have come to the Lord you have come together under the same roof I beg you, agree. Two women, agree. Oh, two men, agree. Man and woman, agree. If you have not been agreeing before together, settle it now and agree. So, follow peace. Endlessly pursue it. The Christian is to spare no effort to live peaceably with all men. No matter how contentious and unfriendly they may be, with God's grace in us, 
exercising and manifesting the spirit of Christ, we must do all that is necessary to promote the happiness of others and maintain peace. We must be humble and gracious to all people around us and let love reign in shall see the Lord. Peace with all men and holiness. Aiming at pursuing and maintaining peace with all men is not sufficient. Because you can bribe your way to just settle the matter. Just make everybody laugh with you. Everybody, oh yes, everybody is happy with me. That's not it. Holiness. In making peace with people, you must take holy cause. You must take just cause, righteous cause. Let not your heart condemn you of the step you are taking to make peace. Let it not be shrewdness, hypocrisy, hypocrisy, carnality in making peace. That everybody is laughing with me. Everybody, I don't have no problem with anybody. But it is a superficial. And yet, you can see death in your mouth. After you have spoken, your mouth is dirty. Although the man now is laughing, but your mouth is dirty. Your heart is defiled. So, peace with all men, not enough. Holiness. Everybody say holiness. Exactly. Why are you even making peace with all men? Is it not because you want to come to the holiness by which you can see the Lord? Then why must we uh, adopt unrighteous means to make that peace? Then we are missing that holiness. Because we are adding sin to sin. We are adding sin to sin. There is, there is a date in your cloth, and your handkerchief is also as equally stained. You want to use it to clean it. What do you mean by that? Are you really thinking to remove that spot, that dead? No. So, peace with holiness. Otherwise, no man shall see the Lord. We must be diligent in pursuing, possessing, and manifesting real holiness. There is holiness of life. Immediately we are born again because real conversion makes us new creatures in Christ and we live in newness of life yet there is inward purity or inner holiness or death or definite experience of sanctification that we seek to receive through prayer consecration and faith being sanctified and made holy we follow holiness practical holiness of life in all we do or desire as important as it is to follow peace with all men, it is more important that we diligently pursue holiness. Diligently pursue holiness. Why? Because in the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 45. Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 45. The Bible tells us, for I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. I am the one that, have, that brought you out of the world to be your God. Therefore, you should be holy, for I am holy. In First Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. The Bible again tells us saying, But as he who hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, manner of your life. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. God is holy. The one that called you to the church is holy. The one that called you to the ministry is holy. The one that gave you that grace, that gift of the spirit is holy the one that gave you that position you occupy is holy the one that put the ministry in your hand is holy therefore make sure you are holy be holy 
for I am holy. It says in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 22. Romans chapter 6 verse 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Why are we talking about this holiness? It's because eternal life is attached to holiness. Without holiness, our Christian work is vanity. Our Christian effort is vanity. Eternal life is attached to holiness. That's why he says, now that you have been made free from sin, you were made free, saved when you were born again, but you came again to God and said, Lord, my inner heart is still having some problem. The inner heart, my mind, my spirit, my mind, my person inside is still having some problem. I still see some unholiness in my life. It's dirty and I can know it registers in my conscience. I see that I am overcome. I see I'm dirty. Oh Lord, do another work in me. Touch me, cleanse me with his soap, and I shall be whiter than snow. You come again for this definite Christian experience called sanctification, which is next to salvation. Then you are made free from sin. It's like a person who carries a dirty cloth and washes it. The dead goes out, and then he takes it for rinsing to remove everything remaining. So God rinse me. That I might be fully free. So that is the experience of sanctification. You need holiness of life to go to heaven. Because when you have your fruit unto holiness, the end is everlasting life. The end might be when Jesus Christ will come, in case he meets you alive. But the end may be when you die. Whichever way you die, that's the end. You will have everlasting life. The end will be everlasting life. Again, look at Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse one. Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse one. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness. In the fear of God. Growth in holiness. You have been brought to the position of holiness. By experience. Now walk forward. Anything the Lord quickens your understanding to know. Is wrong. Correct it. Anything the Lord brings to your mind. To correct. Correct it. Any time there is any circumstance of peacelessness. Arising between you and somebody. Pursue it and settle it. You're perfecting holiness. You're taking holiness. You're moving in it. You're growing in it. You're increasing in holiness. Anything your eyes see to correct. Any unholy character you discover as the Holy Spirit reveals you, stop it. Is it, it may be the way you speak, the way you take actions. The, it may be even your eating habit. It may be your sleeping habit. It may be whatever you come to discover as the Lord reveals. Maybe a message is preached. So I got it. Perfect holiness. Now you have got it. Be doers of the world. Don't allow any filthiness in your life. In the fear of God. As you grow in the holiness. In First Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse, t- verse 10. First Thessalonians chapter 2. I read verse 10 practical example before us. Paul said, Ye are witnesses and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. Thank God Paul said, We, Paul washed the life of others and could attest of them. He didn't see false on them as himself. Then he said, We, is it possible? Is it not possible that we workers, can, Christian workers, can live a holy life before the church? We can. 
Everybody say we can. Is it not possible that leaders, preachers, leaders can live holy lives before the church and before the world? Yes, it is possible. Let's say it is possible. Exactly. Paul spoke for all of them that they live holy lives. They were so careful. They walked it careful what to say, what to do to ensure they maintained that holy life. In chapter 3 of First Thessalonians, verse 12 and 13, it says, And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love, one toward another, and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end, he may establish your heart unblameably, unblameable in holiness before God. Even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, with all his sins, brethren, we have tried before man. And thank God, man has not accused us. But what about before God? Who does not judge as man judges? Can we be considered unblameable before God in holiness? Does our God justify us as he justified Job? I know my servant Job. As he justified Daniel? As he justified Enoch? Can God justify us? Go and ask him, does he justify you? Is your heart holy? Does God say you are holy? Does he speak to you so or you are guilty? Then go back to him that makes holy. In case you were before, but you fall, you are fallen. Go back to him to restore you. The Lord is my shepherd. He restored my soul. Go back to him. Let him restore this holiness life in you. Let him restore it to you. Back again to real holiness of life. That scripture in chapter 4. Verse 7 For God hath not called us unto uncleanness But unto holiness Let every man know it Chapter 5 verse 22 to 24 Abstain from all appearance of evil And the very God of peace sanctify you holy I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body Be preserved blameless Unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ And let us say Amen. Faithful is he that calleth you out. Who also will do it? Faithful. He that has called you, brother, he meant to give you heaven. He meant to give you heaven. That's why he called you. Sister, God meant to take you there. That's why he called you. Therefore, come to him and make sure you are blameless. You are guiltless. Particularly at a time like this, that our minds are full of thoughts, that the prince of this world will come and see nothing in your life. He will come and investigate your thoughts. They pass your thoughts through the computer and discover that there is no ill in your thoughts. What a blessed man. At a time like this, you could be guiltless. At a time like this, it's like a student when about a thousand people sat for exam and find that 50 people met it 950 failed you really praise God for those 50 people because 950 failed at a time like this you could be holy but why wouldn't we have a thousand passing what made the 50 to pass and 950 to fail? Is the problem with the Yek? I'm asking you. No. If they too can stand up. If they too can determine. They too can make it. Thank God somebody write the exams and make it. You are going to make it. If you have not yet made it, you will make it. And I pray the very God of peace will sanctify you holy and we will be blameless. 
every one of us in Jesus name point number three finally determination to see God Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 it says follow peace with all men and holiness <laughs> without which no man shall see the Lord let me ask you a question is God worth seeing because all this effort is to see him is he worth seeing if he is worth seeing then the effort is worthwhile as someone said even if all our Christian commitment effort and sacrifices persecutions all we go through were just that we should go to heaven and see it for one day that it is worth it I mean just one day talking about the glory the beauty magnificence of heaven if all well, just that we should go and see heaven for one day and then come back to the earth. It is worth it. It's worth it. Then, how much more of going to see him and stay there? It's worth more than that. So, follow peace with all men and holiness. With that which no man shall see the Lord. He is the, mo- he is the supreme being in the universe. The greatest person. More than that. He is the one that brought being to being. He is worth seeing. He is worth staying with. But you can't with that holiness. I really bless God. Because I said... This God, no, but he said there is no another person like him. He is self-existent. He created all things, everywhere, man. Nobody can challenge him. He has all power. But there is a unique character of God that baffles me. His holiness. If he commits sin, can anybody challenge him? If he commits sin, can anybody imprison him? If he does, can anybody say anything to him? No. He is a supreme. But, he is not a sinner. He is holy. That's a unique attribute of God. He is like that. And says, you want to see me, you must be holy. That's the word. In Job chapter 33, verse 26. Job, 33 verse 26 it says he shall pray unto God and he will be favorable unto him and he shall see his face with joy for he will render unto man his righteousness you pray to God he will be favorable unto you and he will grant you the holiness that will see his face may God grant you the holiness that will see his face in Jesus name in the book of Isaiah Chapter 33, verse 15 to 17. Isaiah 33, 15 to 17. He that, in, uh, let's, let's, let's start from verse 14. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness have surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with a devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despised the game of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stopped his ears from hearing of blood, and shutted his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on her. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. Thine eye shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Your eyes. When you are free from sin like this. Then 
your eyes shall see the Lord in his beauty. You will be able to behold the land that is afar off, that heaven. You will see it. You will be there. You can meet this qualification. Have you noticed that not everybody contests for presidency? They will say, if you want to register as a candidate, presidential candidate, bring 10 million. Are there people that pay 10 million? Do they pay up to 10 million? Are there people that will register up to 10 million? Uh -uh. Even if they say it's 1 billion, people will register. Will people register? People will register. Even if they say 1 billion. Look at these people, they say, if you want to be an allergy, go to Mecca. Is that so? Do they go? Even poor people, they know how to connect like this, connect like this, to still go there and change their teeth. They make it. With that, even with this heavy amount of money, they still make it. You can make the qualification for heaven. I say you can make the qualification for heaven. By the grace of God, this holiness of life, you will attend to it in Jesus' name. That's scripture. Your eyes shall see the Lord. As you attend to this holiness and righteousness of life, your eye shall see the Lord in his beauty. Yes. That's the scripture. In the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Matthew chapter 5. I read verse 8. The Bible tells us, saying, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Therefore, let's stand for this holiness. We have come to continue in holiness. Were you holy before you came? Then we are continuing in holiness. Were you not holy before you came? Get this holiness. Because we are continuing, we are moving in holiness. Let this holiness, holy, 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 let this holiness be our own possession. You are going to stand up and pray for peace with all men. You will be determined. If you have any scores, you will settle it. Peace with all men. And this holiness that affects and changes your thoughts, changes your actions, will be your possession. Let's rise up upon our feet. And go before the Lord in prayer. Follow peace with all men. In Jesus' name we pray. Now you are going to think. Is there anyone you don't have peace with him? And now you are told that your righteousness is not complete. Except you have peace with him. If you have not made all effort to have peace with him, you are not living a righteous life. Don't boast of righteousness. You are going to pray for that person that God will help you to live in peace with him. You will pray that God will help you to live in peace with her. And <clears throat> you ask God, what will you do for this peace to come? Let us pray. Thank you. 
Take this song. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. 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 Holy. Holy, holy, ho- holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy. Sitting down, can you stand up and join this song? You are sleeping.
if this holiness is a reality the lord should manifest it today he should pour it upon us every one of us in jesus name you are going to go to god and say god make me holy this holiness is a reality make me holy i want to make sure i am holy and you make me holy let us pray you go to god ask him to do it really looking for something from God and you should look for holiness you should look for it are you not for heaven are you not longing to go to heaven you can't afford to close your mouth at this period you must pray for heaven pray for holiness
Let us sing. Satan, get behind me. I will serve my God. Satan, get behind me. I will serve my God. Satan, get behind me. I will serve my God. Satan, get behind me. I will serve my God. Say to Satan, get behind me. I say, say to Satan, get behind me. I say, shout to Satan, get behind me. Satan, get behind him. He will serve his God. I say, Satan, get behind her. She will serve the Lord. Say to Satan, get behind me. We say to Satan, get behind us. We will serve our God. Satan, get behind us. We will serve our God. Satan will not go to heaven. Satan will not believe in Jesus. Satan will not honor God. Satan does not need righteousness. He doesn't need the approval of God. But you need it. Let him not hinder you. I want you to tell him to get behind you. You are going forward. You are going forward. You are going forward. Go before the Lord in prayer. Satan get behind me. In Jesus name. Get behind me. I will serve my God. Father.
نیل Thank <laughs> you. 